So if I start with a two-tangle, it doesn't even have to be a rational tangle, even though we're going to pretend that it is. If I just start with a random tangle, T, um, and I form, let's say I form the numerator closure. So I close up the top and the bottom. What is going to determine for me whether or not this is a knot or whether or not it's actually a two-component link? What do you think? What do we need to know about what's going on inside that tangle? Let's say I start with this red strand, right, this red vertex in the upper left. Um, and suppose that I follow that strand through my tangle, through whatever it does, and suppose that in the end, it ends up connecting with the top, the top right, the northeast. Uh, what then does that tell me? It's got to be a link, because then that forces the other two vertices on this diagram, whatever else is happening with them, they have to connect with one another as well. Right? Um, so there's one case in which we end up getting a link instead of a knot. Um, so if I back that up a bit, um, how would I, what's one way of getting a knot instead of a link? What should I connect the northwest vertex to? If I connect it to the bottom right, then what is that force? It forces the southwest and the northeast to connect. And if we trace my strand all the way through, if I connect northwest to southeast, then the numerator closure is going to automatically connect southeast to southwest. And if I then connect southwest to northeast, the numerator closure connects me back into northwest. Right. So the fact that we're choosing the numerator closure here uh, means that all that's necessary to make a knot is to make sure that the strands are connecting diagonally okay, uh, across this tangle, that we're connecting northwest to southeast uh, and northeast to southwest. Is that the only possibility? Yeah, what happens if I, all this happens in here and I end up connecting out to there? Connect northwest to southwest. Is that going to give me a knot or give me a link? It would be a knot, wouldn't it? That looks like it's going to be a knot, too. Yeah. Right. Um, so the only, the only possibility that gives us a link instead of a knot in the numerator closure is the case in which the strands are connected, the top strands are connected to one another in the tangle, and the bottom strands are connected to one another in the tangle. So even though that they're twisting with one another, they still remain separate. In the, they remain parts of separate components uh, in the numerator closure and give us a two-component link. Um, so what are some ways of sort of tabulating this here? In the numerator closure, we're going to get a knot whenever northwest connects with southwest, whenever northwest connects with southeast. Um, but we're going to get a link when northwest connects with northeast. So it's kind of, if we flip a coin, a three-sided coin, <laughs> then in two of those three cases, uh, we're going to get a knot. And in the third case, we get a link. Um, so then the question is, how does Conway notation help us to tell the difference? Or can Conway notation help us to tell the difference? Um, since we're dealing with rational tangles, the stuff that's going on inside this black box is not quite as, it's not quite the Wild West in there, right? Because we've built our tangle using only this finite series of twists added to the right side and twists added to the bottom of the tangle. That's definite, by definition, rational tangles are all built out of, that, um, out of that process. Not really just definition. We also work to prove the theorem you know, that shows that we can represent any rational tangle as a succession of right twists followed by bottom twists and then possibly repeated. Right? Um, so let's think for a second about an inductive argument. Let's say I start with an empty tangle. And for us, the empty tangle was the one with horizontal strands. Is the numerator closure a link or a knot? It's a link. OK. Um, what if I start adding twists 
on the right side. So if I add one, then what's that gonna look like? There's my empty tangle, I'm gonna add um, a positive twist, so that's, oops, that's this. Now is the numerator closure a link or not? It's a knot. I've connected northwest to southeast. Right? I've connected diagonally across the tangle. And so now the numerator closure is a knot. So if I added one, we ended up with a knot. Um, what if I add one more? So now I've got kind of diagram this. I'm going to keep the colors preserved here so you can see what was happening. And then I add one more positive twist. Now is the numerator closure a link or a knot? Okay. It's a link again, right? So we can begin to develop a pattern, maybe, by looking at what's happening when I add single twists. Right? Every time I add a single twist, I flip from knot to link. Right? If I started with a link, I add one twist, I get a knot. Add another twist, I'm back to link. Right? Uh, at least that seems to be the case for um, uh, for these basic examples. Now suppose that I start with an arbitrary tangle whose numerator closure is a link. So let's suppose that this one is a link. What happens if I add one more twist to it? It's going to be a knot, right. And if I then add one more twist to it, I'm going to get a link again. Um, so it's kind of setting up what looks to me like, well, let's look at the tangle numbers of these for a minute, because that's what gives us the Conway notation ultimately is the continued fraction representation of the, of the rational tangle. Tangle number of this was zero. What's the tangle number of this? One. And then two. Um, so what's a reasonable conjecture to pull out of that that's going to differentiate between links and knots? suggest a parity argument, right? Evenness versus oddness. Somehow, all of the links in this, at least in this family of rational tangles, all the links are those whose tangle numbers are even, and all the knots are those whose tangle numbers are odd. Um, and we also can kind of convince ourselves that if I start with any old rational tangle whose uh, numerator closure is a link, and I add one to it, I get back to knots. So it's not just a simple class that does it, um, that adding one to any rational tangle is going to turn one that used to be a link into one which is now a knot. Um, so whatever evenness and oddness might exist, it, it seems like that's something that might be preserved even when the tangles get more complicated. Um, so that's what seems to happen when I add one. Um, what if we, instead of adding, what if we multiply? Right, thinking about the, the other operation on rational tangles. So let's, uh, well, this is going to give us, so if I just multiply by 1 over 1, right? in other words, add a twist on the bottom instead of adding a twist on the right. So here's this. So now, now what do we conclude? Well, the problem is that this is no longer even a rational tangle. Well, hold on. No, it still is a rational tangle. It's just kind of weird. Um, if I take the numerator closure of this, do I get a knot or do I get a link? It's still a link. And if I add one more twist on the bottom, do I get a knot or do I get a link? Still a link. So somehow adding twists on the bottom seems to be behaving differently than adding twists on the right. Um, let's try to do the arbitrary version, where I start with a generic rational tangle whose numerator closure is a link. And if I add one more twist on the bottom, What can we conclude there? Still going to be a link, 
Right, and it's again the 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 nature of numerator closure is what's doing it, right? Because numerator closure is closing up the tops and the bottoms. And so if all I'm doing is adding more twists on the bottoms, I'm not going to fundamentally be changing um, how, the, how the northwest does or does not connect to the northeast, which is what determines whether we had a link or not, right? Um, and so somehow adding twists on the bottom doesn't seem to matter. Right? Adding twists on the right did seem to matter. Um, so suppose now that I have a knot whose Conway notation is. So for the knot with Conway notation 4, 3, what does that mean? Um, that means we can build this knot out of the rational tangle uh, whose continued fraction representation is this. Which means in its twist form, what we would be doing is taking a three tangle and then multiplying it by the vertical four tangle. And so what I end up with, I'll make a little bit of space for myself to draw this here. By the way, part of this week's uh, blog is going to ask you to reflect on the course and what's been most challenging for you. I'm expecting drawing diagrams to be high on that list, and so I've explicitly said, say something besides drawing <laughs> diagrams, please. Um, but yeah, that's hard for everybody. <laughs> so uh, what this ends up looking like is I've got four twists over here. One, two, three, four. Um, and then I've got three coming up this way. Here. This is going to come up there. It's going to come down there. So this is what that tangle looks like. Um, and then we would just be forming the numerator closure uh, of that. Okay. Um, and so just to be sure, so when we trace the strand through, northwest connects to southwest, and so we have a knot. And what we don't want is we don't want northwest to connect to northeast, because that would give us the link. Um, so is there something about the three and the four in this Conway notation that could tell me that the northwest vertex connects to the southwest, or equivalently, that the northeast does not connect to the northwest. Is there anything about the three or the four that might guarantee that for us? So the oddness of the three, which describes this rightmost tangle, or rightmost twist in my tangle, um, it's going to tell me that the northeast vertex is going to cross here, cross there, cross there. Except now, after that three is done, now we still have to keep following this strand through the rest of the tangle. Maybe that's OK. Um, because once we followed it through, we end up here. And then we end up, so we know now that we're either going to, the northeast is either going to end up connecting to the northwest, which we don't want, or the Southwest, which we do want. Um, and so when we actually come through here, we end up, oh, wait. We end up back in my odd tank, or my odd twist over here again when I follow that strand. And since I'm back in where my odd twist started, I know now that I'm going to end up in the southeast. Um, whereas if we had somehow, so what would have happened in order to connect us to here? Once I come through this three and I end up there, what was it about this twist that told me that I would come back to, uh, to my original three twist instead of just getting dumped into the northwest vertex? The, even. the evenness of the four. So the fact that the three was odd showed me that when I came out of this twist, I ended up in the bottom. And the fact that the four was even showed that I came out of this on the same. So that might be a reasonable conjecture, is that even twists return me to the same direction that we started. So this four meant that I entered this twist from the right, and I also exited that twist on the right. And so I got returned to my original twist over here. Whereas this three told me that when I, ex when I entered this twist from the top, I exited it from the bottom. So maybe we're getting a little bit closer 
to where we want to be. Ultimately, the thing we don't want is we don't want the northeast to connect to the northwest. And in order for that to happen, either I need to exit my first twist from the bottom, but then switch over to the, the left side of the twist that I end up in, or I need to exit this twist on the top and then also cross over to the other side uh, of this twist. So the fact that this four here is even also seems important. So somehow just one of these numbers doesn't look like it's enough to guarantee us what we need, but maybe somehow it's a combination of those numbers that's going to give us what we need. Um, but we're honing in on something. Right? We're honing in on a possible conjecture. Um, and the approach to proving their claim is probably going to be something similar to the arguments we were making a minute ago about induction. Right? That if I know what happens for a given arbitrary tangle, right? if I know whether it gives me a link or whether it doesn't give me a link, then I should be able to um, show that sort of the, that the, that the prediction that we're making is preserved if I add one more thing into my Conway notation. Maybe if I, if I increase the length of my continued fraction by one, so if I go from four, three, if I know that this one is a knot um, and I want to add one more piece into my continued fraction, let's say I add in a five or something like that, um, can I say for sure that that's still going to be a knot? So maybe the evenness and oddness um, uh, is, is a function of, of how we extend uh, rational tangles, uh, sorry, uh, continued fractions to have a longer length. Um, or maybe we can do it one twist at a time. Um, I don't know, but it seems like we're, we're getting a little bit warmer, uh, so I want to kind of leave that maybe where it is. 